Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Look, uh, this won't take long. This is a follow up to uh, the video that I did. I believe it was on yesterday. It may have been the day before. I'm a little kind of off track, uh, running behind, trying to get some things done. But I simply talked about the fact that Joe Biden had literally signed uh, an executive order uh, compelling public schools to allow transgendered girls to compete with biological girls. Um, as a former athlete, um, there's so much that goes on with this. To me, this isn't simply a black issue, uh, but it points to a problem, uh, and I shared it, uh, that there is even uh, with a transgender person who is taking hormones, there's still genetic advantages. Uh, the way the muscles are developed, the way the muscles are attached at the tendons to the bones, uh, all of these provide an advantage. Uh, the, the way the hips are made, all of this stuff is literally uh, scientifically proven, this isn't something I'm making up. Uh, first of all, I'm a former athlete. Second of all, I've been um, certified as a fitness uh, professional for uh, since they've been certifying, and I was doing it before then. I have a master's degree in biomechanics and kinesiology. Uh, so I'm not speaking from a place of ignorance. Now, when I share that, I share that because that's an issue. And the reason I brought it up on a forum that's primarily focused on black issues is because Joe Biden made a promise that he would do that, that he would champion the causes of the LGBTQ community and the causes of immigrants. Uh, and I brought it up to point out the fact that while blacks have been the most dedicated and loyal group as it pertains to Democrats. We have gotten very little, if anything, from them. Uh, there was some misunderstanding on that video, and rather than go back and forth and type, I just made another video so I can make it clear that way everybody can get it without having to go through and read stream after stream, comment after comment. Uh, the point was made that why is it that blacks uh, seem to want to hold Democrats more responsible than we hold Republicans? Well, that post had nothing to do about holding Democrats up. That had specifically to do about a specific person who was voted heavily, uh, received a heavy dose of the black vote, which has happened since the Voting Rights Act. That blacks have loyally given 90% of the black vote to Democrats. So on that alone, blacks should be able to call Democrats to the mat with greater intensity and veracity than they do Republicans. They didn't vote for Republicans. They voted for Democrats They because the Democrats told them they had their back. They have We have believed since we flipped from Republican to Democrat, we have believed religiously in the Democratic promise, the Democrat promise that has never been delivered. Now, to clarify some things, we have not gained ground under Democratic administrations. If you actually research and you understand what's going on, we have taken some of our biggest blows under Democratic administrations, Democrat administrations. First and foremost, we can go back to the 60s. In 1965, there was a push to underwrite black households with social programs. Issue is, for the most part, able-bodied adult men would not, could not be in the home to receive the social, the, uh, social subsidies. In 1965, Daniel Patrick Monaghan wrote uh, a report for Lyndon B. Johnson, a Democrat, and told him, in in short, if you want to read it, I've, 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 I've broken it down so many times, it's unbelievable, but told him, in short, that the black population represents a unique issue because we are going to have to deal with the fallout, the economic fallout, the social fallout, the mental and psychological fallout of slavery. He followed that by saying, instead of investing millions at that time, which would be billions now, millions in the programs for subsidies uh, to underwrite uh, 
uh, underwrite black families, which alienate the black man, create jobs, give black men jobs, and let black men take, their, take care of their family. The administration, Congress, Senate ignored it, implemented these programs, began the decimation and uh, disintegration of the black family unit as we knew it in the 60s and before, where 75% of black children were born into two-parent households. Uh, that has almost flipped. Uh, hopefully we're making uh, an about face on that, but that's that. We can come up all the way through um, the next big Democrat push because we had Jimmy Carter, then we went right back to Republicans with Reagan for uh, eight years and then Bush for another four years and then came Clinton. Clinton, under Clinton, we got the crime bill that totally decimated the black community for nonviolent crimes, uh, for a lot of crimes that people are now becoming millionaires for doing concerning marijuana. Um, and even Bill Clinton has come out and said that was one of the worst things that happened during his administration and he admits that it was devastating and that you know he wished that he would not have gotten behind it. Okay, so we can talk about what we think or what we feel, but we need to be able to back that up with research. We need to be able to back that up and look at it and see. The truth of the matter is, neither side is for us. They have never been for us. They have played us. They have given us love. And we can go too deep, want to come up even more. We can go to the Obama administration. That's another eight years of Democrats. We didn't gain ground, we lost ground. The wealth gap widened under the Obama administration. Also, during a time when blacks were loudest about being killed and mishandled and abused by police, Obama signed the Blue Lives Matter law into effect. Simult almost simultaneously after signing that, within weeks, he goes on national TV and gets behind the LGBTQ community and provides them protections. So we can talk about all this, but my whole thing is the simple answer to why blacks go all in on Democrats is because blacks vote all in for Democrats. If I didn't hire you, if I voted against you, it comes to a basic reason that I'm not gonna be expecting much from you. So I'm not losing my mind, but when I vote for you because you told me you weren't like them, and then I get the same thing as I would have got with them, yes, I'm gonna hold you to a higher standard. Yes, I'm going to be upset. My thing is I'm at the point that I'm not upset with Democrats. I know who they are. I understand who they are. I understand what they do. I understand that the right wing and the left wing belong to the same bird. I'm not, I didn't post that about Democrat versus Republican. I posted that because that's who you voted in. And I can't think that that would be a logical thing, but certain groups are getting more protection than we are. And we are the very group on which this nation's power and wealth was built. That's my thing. That's what I'm talking about. That's what has me, you know, speaking on the issue at all. So, you know, I just, I just want to get that clear. We can, we can't we cannot sit around and speak on and claim a, a illusion as reality. First of all, we we have gained no ground. No measurable ground. Anything you can measure, we're in last place, and it's gotten worse over the years. Socioeconomically, last place. The wealth gap, last place. Access to uh, high levels of uh, education uh, through high school, last place. Over and over and over again, we can talk about where we are, but when you measure it, we're in last place. Right now, if you go out and you look at homes, which is one of the ways that wealth, whites have built their wealth over time, home ownership, that's not even a fair player ground, and it's gotten worse. Here's how. Take a black family and a white family, put them in the same area, in the same uh, comparable house. We're talking about comparable. When you do a... Uh, 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 you know, comparable analysis in a house, you're doing a uh, comparison, you're doing comps, you're running comps. You said, okay, in a similar house that's in the same area within a certain uh, number of square miles, with it two or three square miles or whatever, same square footage, same erection type, two, two story, one story, whatever. 
the houses for the whites are valued higher than the blacks. And uh, to prove that it wasn't just some anomaly, there have been tests where blacks have literally taken all proof of the fact that the house is owned by backs like pictures and, and anything else off the wall when the appraiser comes through and the house values higher. Okay, on the flip side of that, same situation when it comes to property taxes. Whites houses valued lower, blacks houses valued higher. That's consistently going on. You look at serial force displacement where blacks are being pushed out of their areas uh, through gentrification right now, but it's been done over the years, redlining, urban renewal, benign neglect, uh, now gentrification. It's a constant force of serial, di uh, uh, for force serial, serial force displacement where you're being forced out of an area and then you're being dispatched because you're not all going to the same area. Once you leave that area, you're being disbanded and you're taking away the collective power and the socialization and so much more. That is happening on a rapid pace. Harlem isn't Harlem anymore. Most go through certain parts. Of third Ward in Houston isn't Third Ward anymore. It's uptown. Historically black. One of the most prestigious and recognized black high schools in America is in that area. That's what we gotta learn. We gotta sit up and we gotta look at the whole thing. My thing is on the simple note. For the person who wants to know why is it that we are